Hi everyone and welcome back to our Stealth AI series. Previously we've set up and got it working for our enemy guard to patrol path. Um, what we're going to do now is make it so that the enemy can see you uh, and then go on to hearing you and then be able to have the player get past that with their own stealth. Okay, so let's go through the perception process. So on the enemy, on their controller, so find their controller, we can add a perception input onto here. So I'm going to add component and do perception and you'll find AI perception. With that there, you can go onto the right hand side and you can choose what senses they will have. So our guards are going to have two senses straight away. Uh, they're going to have their sight and their hearing. Let's just focus on sight first of all. So the first one, uh, array number zero, is going to be sight. So go to sight. Expand it open. Expand it open. And in this way you can customize the sight radius, the loose sight radius, uh, the peripheral half vision, affiliation, uh, and other little debug things too. So I'm going to change their sight radius and loose sight radius down a lot. So sight radius we're going to go down to just 1000. And loose sight we're going to go as uh, 1500. And the peripheral half vision angle we're going to change from 90 down to something like uh, let's say uh, 35. Now the reason why you want to do this is because 90 is a half angle so that means they will have vision 180 degrees in front of them which is a bit unfair for a stealth based game you tend to want to have a narrow vision cone so 35 would be quite nice because it gives you a 70, 70 degree angle uh, right now we want to detect enemies neutrals and friendlies more on that another time and the uh, rest of it we can leave as is okay uh, next we're going to go and make the, uh, the hearing one and add hearing here to array number one go to hearing Open this up, and we've got hearing range, 3000, detection again here, uh, and some basic debug stuff. So hearing range, I'm going to change that to, uh, let's say, 1500, and I'm going to detect enemies, neutrals, and friendlies all ticked on. Again, more, more affiliation stuff later. So with now our senses correctly set up on our AI perception component, we now need to add the event to handle those senses. So if you go to the component list and right click on AI perception, go add event and choose on target perception updated, this will return the actor and the stimulus that was triggered when it saw the actor. So both of these will be used to determine whether or not the enemy should go into an alert mode or go in an attack mode, either way. So if it goes in alert we want it to investigate and attack, we also want to chase down and attack the player. So first thing we need to do is determine what stimulus triggered it because if it's hearing we don't want it to go in attack mode straight away we want it to investigate the sound first so on stimulus here we're going to go out here and get sense class for stimulus and if I just print string that you can see it working and put that in there and that in there so it gets a display name of the class that triggered it so if I push play AI sense underscore sight is what's triggered when it sees me okay um, so we can use that to determine um, where is it determine what we're going to handle and do with our senses so I'm gonna give it the print string but keep the get, get displayed name I'm then going to drag that out and do switch on string now what I can do here is I can type in the name of each class that I'm going to have checked here so add pin, we click on there, we can go to the right hand side and change the pin name to what it said on our display name which is AI sense underscore site and to see if that's working if I do print string here and to say hello it should now choose that path and say hello there you go and likewise you do one for hearing as well now we haven't done the hearing reporting yet but we can just add it here for now and it'd be pretty much the same, so it's AI sense underscore hearing. Okay, and that's it. So that's going to just determine what we should be doing with each one. And if it is hearing, we want to investigate and head towards that point. Okay, so we need to go take whether or not we're in alert mode or uh, attack mode or whatever. So what we're going to do 
is we're going to send that over to our behavior tree via a blackboard. Now the blackboard currently, or behavior tree sorry, is just going around the motions of the patrol path. Let's just get rid of the random one for now. And what we want to do is basically interrupt this to go investigate whatever it just sensed. So if we go to blackboard and go new key and go ball and we'll type in is investigating and we'll make that false by default so go to the behavior tree and on a sequence for this one we're going to right click on it add decorator and choose blackboard and the blackboard key for this is going to be our is investigating so if is investigating is not set so change the key query to is not set it will go and do this if it is set we want it to do something else so i'm going to drag that over like so and go down here I'll do another sequence and we're going to do a move to on here making sure we use the target location vector as the blackboard key and on this sequence we're going to right click on here add decorator blackboard and choose the is investigating and make sure it's set to is set I'm just going to rename our sequence here to be called the investigation sequence and whilst we're here we'll rename this one to patrol sequence okay so now we've got that boolean set up here we can choose what sequence is going to be used based on our blackboard so if I go back to my AI controller and we'll go into the uh, well let's do it in a site for now and we'll take it to set blackboard oh first of all I have to get blackboard sorry get blackboard and you want this bottom one here and then set blackboard value as ball plug that into AI sense so what we're doing here is we need to determine whether or not we saw something so that's going to come from our stimulus which is here so drag out from this stimulus and do break Oop. and if you expand the open you'll see successfully sensed as a boolean so this will trigger both times when it loses sight and when it gains sight so this will be true or false so we're going to use this for this over here so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to plug this section here into a function so if I right click on that and do collapse the function and I'm going to call this func function handle sense and that just takes in the name of the sense there but I also want to take in the successfully sense or the stimulus actually would be better so if I take that out and add the stimulus to this and stimulus and change the type for that to a stimulus and I can hook that up to there perfect so if I go into that function we've now got this set up here with a switch and handling on here now the reason why it's better to have it as a function is because it makes it a lot easier to handle the stimulus that comes out of this um, so when we've got that here we can just right click and type in stimulus and you'll see it's available like so I can split that and plug in the successfully sensed into it there on key name we're going to make literal and we're going to type in the name of our blackboard key that we made so that was called is investigating so put it in exactly as it appears so is investigating and I'll make it true or false based on our pathing so hit compile and that's the first key the next key we want to do is the location so we have to tell it where to go so I'm basically going to copy all of this and put it again afterwards so the blackboard key this time is going to be our target location vector so I'm just going to copy that and put that in there and 
rather than set value as ball, we're going to set value as vector. Plug in the key name, and the vector value is going to be the stimulus location. Now we only want to do this if this was true. So we're going to move that along and put in a branch just there. And that condition is going to come from successfully sensed. And there you have it. Okay, so uh, that will do that. Next, we want to uh, hit save and go back to our behavior tree. So on our behavior tree, it's going to do this part first. And if it sees us, it's going to stop this and then do this and move to the location of where it saw us. So it should follow the player. So if I hit save now and push play, he should stop what he's seeing. And let's just make sure that that is the case. And let's have a look. Oh, apologies. So the issue is I forgot to go onto the decorator and change the, you know. So only stop doing that if we have set the, these to abort. So if we go to the decorator here and change observer to change on results. So when the change happens on the investigating, we want it to abort both. And likewise, for this one, both. Hit save and hit play. So now he should walk towards me. Okay, so he's walking towards my location, but it's pretty a dumb system because he'll walk to that location and then if I, as soon as I step out of that view angle, he won't continue walking towards it. He'll just uh, stop chasing the player. He just walks directly in a straight line to that point. So the way you get around that is rather than using a location for move to, we use an actor. So we're gonna to go to the blackboard here and go new key and choose object. And this object is going to be target location actor. And you go to the right hand side and change the key type for this one, change the base class here to a actor. Hit save. Then I'm going to go back to my behavior tree and change this move to here, not this one, but this one here on the second investigation sequence. We're going to change the blackboard key to that to the location actor. Now the reason why it's better to use an actor here is because what it'll do is it'll actually trace and follow the actor rather than a location. A location will just go to that location. So with uh, an actor, it'll actually follow it. So we'll have that there. And then we have to go back to our AI controller and change this from target location vector to actor and we'll get rid of that and put in the set blackboard value as object and the name for the key will go from there but the object value you'll notice is not part of this selection here so what we need to get is also from the event graph this actor that we've got here so go to handle senses new parameter and we'll do sensed actor and change the type for that to actor and you can plug that in to it there as well we'll just organize it a little bit there okay so back into our graph here you'll now see actor is now part of our inputs so that means now i can get rid of this one and just put in sensed actor compile so now he should follow where I go unless I walk out of his line of sight so put it on there you can see on debug what happens so if I walk outside of his cone he's going to immediately stop what he's doing if I can get out of his cone uh, I can't hang on so go out of his cone he immediately stopped and just carried on going back to his path, which isn't realistic, but we'll work on that later 
when we do actual investigation stuff. But there you go. He's sensing us and moving towards us. So in the next part, we're going to make it so that he has a proper investigation by looking at where we were last seen and moving and chasing us to where we last saw us. So join us on the next part over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady. We can watch all my videos before anyone else, uh, all from just $1 a month. So thank you so much to all my patrons for their continued support. Uh, and none of this would be possible without you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. If you're watching this and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And that's it from me. Have a great evening and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.